Uh, is there a timeline that is more important to check for ketosis? Is, is the first week more important, the second week more important? And what we found is that usually cows that has high BHB on the second week postpartum, they do well as same as the cow that are negative. So the problem is when you catch a high ketone bodies in the first week postpartum, those cows are the cows that we want to pay attention and and treat as we as much as we can during the first week. So hello everyone, this is uh, Luis Ferrero, one of the hosts of the Dairy Nutrition Black Belt podcast. And today uh, we will be discussing ketosis and how important that is uh, to dairy cows and dairy farms. And to uh, discuss that with us and bring a lot of new information, we have Kaina Florentino, which is a PhD candidate at the University of Minnesota, uh, to bring a lot of new things for us. Kaina, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, but before we begin uh, discussing this very interesting topic, could you give us a brief background about yourself? Sure. Yeah, thanks for having me, uh, Luis. So yeah, my name is Kaina Florentino. I'm originally from Brazil. I got my vet training in Londrina State University. Uh, I joined the University of Minnesota in 2019. I uh, initially was a research technician, and then in 2022, I started my, my grad school. And since then, I have been working with um, sensors and, and transition disease with Dr. Kaishita. So to, to start this discussion, something very simple. What is ketosis? Sure, yeah, I think that's a good, a good way to start. Uh, so ketosis is a condition that helps, uh, happens uh, especially during the first week postpartum. And it happens when a cow doesn't get enough energy from the food. So she starts to break down some fatty reserves. Um, and it, with this process, there are some substances called ketones, which is built up in the blood and can bring some, uh, some consequence for, for the production life of this, this animal. And obviously, if the cow is mobilizing uh, their own reserves, probably this is not a good thing, right? So said that, uh, what are some of the implications uh, to the herd uh, that we should expect when we have issues with ketosis? So the buildup of ketone bodies in the blood can bring a uh, consequence, especially for production. So we can expect some cows with high ketone bodies or ketotic to get um, pregnant, the delayed pregnancy, uh, it can bring some consequences for milk production as well. But today, I want to clarify, I want to maybe dismythify, if I can say that, a little bit the, the fear around ketosis, and I hope we can, we can accomplish that. Absolutely. And uh, uh, obviously, it's a natural process, right? Because the cows mobilize reserves for a reason. Uh, but you mentioned a little bit about ketone bodies and the importance of ketosis, but... In the field, how do we monitor cows to make sure that we catch the cows that have ketosis and make informed decisions about how to treat them or how to make changes if this becomes an issue? Or how do we uh, define that this is not an issue we can continue as we, we are? Two years ago, um, we did a project here where we are trying to answer these questions. Uh, is there a timeline that is more important to check for ketosis? Is the first week more important, the second week more important. And what we found is that usually cows that has high BHB on the second week postpartum, they do well as same as the cow that are negative. So the problem is when you catch a high ketone bodies in the first week postpartum, those cows are the cows that we want to pay attention and and treat as we as much as we can during the first week. And and what type of monitors should we use to uh, keep track of ketone bodies, especially during the first week, as you mentioned, to make sure uh, we don't have those issues? Yeah, we, we use um, those handheld devices, so you can just go collect the blood um, from the cow, and you test it, and then it gives you the, the, the concentration in about like 15 seconds. There are some other uh, ways to, to 
to look for it. So you can look at the urine and the milk. But I think the most common one is the one, uh, the handheld devices. So going back to your study, tell us more uh, about that. Uh, how was the study design? What did you measure? And what did you learn from that study? So yeah, our study, we enrolled cows. All cows in the first week um, after calving, they are all who are eligible to enter this study. So we enrolled them and we collect blood and test for BHB. So we could uh, classify as positive or negative. And also from these cows, we have rumination device that we could use as a proxy for health. Uh, and then this rumination device, we collected uh, rumination and activity from 14 days before calving to 14 days after calving to see uh, somehow if we can use or if we can detect those cows or those problematic cows before uh, the fire actually happened. Oh, very interesting. And obviously, rumination, it's considered a great indicator of uh, health and for us nutritionists of human, human health, of course. Uh, but but tell, us, tell us more about that. Uh, how did you uh, decide to rank cows based on rumination? And uh, how, how did that correlate with some of the uh, ketosis measurements that you took? So it, we, like, as I mentioned, we had rumination from two weeks and pre-part and two weeks postpartum, and how we classify the cows as low recovery or medium or fast recovery. We took the rumination during the first week after calving, uh, and then we do the rumination from each cow by lactation and herd, because we had multiple herds in this study. We calculate the slope for each cow, so what are the effects of day in the rumination? Does this cow increase two, three minutes per day, or she decreases 10 minutes per day, what is happening for her during her first week. With that, then we have quartiles, uh, and the top 25% would be the high ruminating cows or the fast recovery cows. The middle 50% we classified as a medium or, yeah, medium uh, recovery cows, and the bottom 25% we did classify as a, a slow rumination or slow recovery cows. Is it safe to say that the cows that ruminate more are less inclined to have ketosis? Yes, we did observe that the cows that ruminate more, they have a lower incidence of ketosis, but it also happens. Um, because as you mentioned, it's a not natural process that the cows go through. Uh, they need a lot of glucose in the, to initiate the lactation. So it's fairly say that is normal that to happen. Like you have a uh, build up of ketones in the blood as a natural process of calving and starting the initiated lactation. Absolutely. But yeah, the, the, the rumination did, did uh, the high ruminating cows did have less instance than the low rumination cows. No, I think that's great information and, and it's a great starting point, right? Because if you keep right. good track of the cows early on, you should be able to pay closer attention to the cows that you expect to have more issues and from there. But if you allow me to take a little bit of advantage of your expertise with those different devices and uh, working with the data, tell me a little bit about some of the difficulties associated with collecting this data, how to process the data and so on. Because I believe that with every technology, uh, there is always a learning curve and it's never perfect, right? So, so how did you handle that? So we started the cow, we have enrolled 1,800 cows. But at the end, the analysis went up with 900 something cows. And that's exactly the reason what you said. So uh, the information device rely on internet, uh, Wi-Fi, or in the weather technology, or um, satellites. So we do have some missing data points. Uh, usually, specifically the one that I work with, they, they, it gives to me the ruminating, the rumination time uh, per hour, per cow. So they will say like from noon to 1 p.m., this cow will make 30 minutes, from 1 to 2, 20 minutes, and so on. So for the cow be eligible to enter this study, uh, we clean, we found cows that had at least 20 hours in a day. So if she had 19 hours out of the 24, we exclude her because we want, to, we want something more uh, that actually tells us the truth in this story, what's happening. Uh, so that's the reason we end up with 
half of the calls that we we initiate, we enroll. And obviously, you know, especially when you work with research, you have to be as careful as as possible to make sure that the results are consistent and so on. Uh, but this is also true for the dairies, right? Uh, I think at the end of the day, they need to make informed decisions. For sure. Uh, kind of. I, I think you bring a lot of great information today. Uh, I, I think people at home will truly enjoy going through all this ketosis. Before we finalize our discussion here, is there anything else you would like to add? So those cows, then we'll follow for those cows, uh, those cows, uh, low, medium, and high remaining cows through 10 months in their lactations. And, and we found that the cows with fast recovery usually produce, and in our results, produce 10 pounds more on average per day than the low ruminating cows and both asketotic cows. So that, I think that, that that's a good information to have, which keep in mind, I think can help people to make informed decisions, especially for cooling decisions. So if you have a problematic cow with ketosis and you know that she is the bottom 25 of her herd, maybe that's a sign that, or can help help the farmer to make a decision whether cooling or not. Um, and we also found that those cows, um, usually they produce in the 305 metric equivalent milk, they produce 10% more with their herd mates. Um, so that's, I think, is also a, a good, good information to have. So just for the first week postpartum, you can, um, I would say, predict what could happen throughout her lactation. So I think this is a good good tool to have and can can help farmers to to make more informed decisions in their herd. Absolutely. No, and certainly it makes a huge difference because that's a lot of milk uh, and, and something that you can uh, you know learn very early on as you as you just described. So kinda thank you again for joining us today. A lot of great information for people at home. And thank you at home for joining the podcast. We hope to see you soon. Hey everyone, we are always searching for the latest and greatest research to share weekly. If you have a dairy nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show and share it with us, feel free to email the details of your research to hello at wisenetics.com. Thank you and hope to see you soon.